A polyprotic acid is an acid that contains more than one donatable proton. Uh, recall that a Bronsted-Lowry acid is a substance that donates a proton. If a, a species can donate more than one proton, it's considered a polyprotic acid. For example, H3PO4, phosphoric acid, is a polyprotic acid. It will ionize and donate all three, eventually, of these protons, but polyprotic acids always, we can think of them as ionizing one at a time. And so what we would do is we would write a series of equilibrium reactions for each of the protons donated. For example, as phosphoric acid donates its first proton, it forms this reaction. One hydrogen ion, H plus, is donated, and H2PO4 with a negative charge is the anion. The H2PO4 with a negative charge is the conjugate base of phosphoric acid. Even though it's the conjugate base of phosphoric acid, it also can behave like an acid because it has a donatable proton. There are protons that dihydrogen phosphate ion can donate. Uh, before we do that, there is an equilibrium constant for this first reaction. This is the formula for this ionization constant, and because phosphoric acid is polyprotic, it is customary to call this the first ionization constant, or the Ka1 value. That's because there is a second ionization reaction that can happen. This conjugate base of, phos the, of phosphoric acid, this dihydrogen phosphate ion, actually can also act like an acid. H2PO4- minus is amphiprotic, or, or amphoteric. It can act as either an acid or base. Which it behaves like, what it does, which it acts like, depends on what you put it with. If I just put it with water, it's going to act like an acid. If I put it with another stronger acid, it will act like the Bronsted-Lowry base. But in, in an aqueous solution, uh, without the presence of another chemical species that's going to take the place of it acting like an acid, this will undergo another ionization. This is my balanced equilibrium reaction. This is my second ionization of phosphoric acid. So what I would do is I would look up phosphoric acid in a table of Ka values, and I would look for the second ionization constant for phosphoric acid. This would be listed as the Ka2, or the second ionization constant for H3PO4. Even though H3PO4 does not show up in this equilibrium reaction, this is where it comes from. And it is calculated like this. All right, this is the formula for the equilibrium constant. This is the equilibrium reaction for the second ionization of phosphoric acid. In this case, this species is behaving like the acid. This is dihydrogen phosphate ion. And the hydrogen phosphate ion is the conjugate base of the H2PO4 minus. This is absolutely true. HPO4 negative 2 is the conjugate base of H2PO4 minus. However, this can also act like an acid. As an acid, HPO4 negative 2 will donate a proton to water or ionize, and I will get this equilibrium reaction. This is the third ionization of phosphoric acid. So in a table, I would look for phosphoric acid, and I would look for his third ionization constant, or his Ka3. So we have a stepwise ionization for phosphoric acid. In this case, there are three steps because there are three protons that can be donated. And each step along the way, we can see the further dissociation, and we would label the ionization constant as we go along as 1, 2, and 3. In this last step, the PO4 minus 3 is the conjugate base of HPO4 negative 2. It cannot act like an acid because it does not have a proton to donate, so this is where the series ends. PO4 minus 3 uh, can only be a weak base. It cannot be a weak acid. You're never going to find, well, you're probably never going to find a table with a numerical value for the Kb for this base but you would use his conjugates, Ka, in order to 
find his KB value. So if I needed for whatever reason to find the KB for phosphate ion, PO4 minus 3, I could use the relationship between um, a conjugate acid base pair, the Ka times the Kb of a conjugate acid base pair is equal to 1 times 10 to the minus 14. So Kb for the phosphate ion times the Ka for his conjugate, he is the conjugate of HPO4 negative 2, will equal 1 times 10 to the minus 14. Well, HPO4 negative 2 is not going to be listed in a table. He will be listed as the Ka3 for phosphoric acid. This Ka value is the equilibrium constant for this guy, this acid, reacting. And so I would solve for the Kb for the phosphate ion. I would look up the third ionization constant for phosphoric acid, the Ka3 value, to plug in because that third ionization constant is the Ka for HPO4 negative 2's equilibrium reaction. And HPO4 negative 2 is the conjugate of PO4 minus 3. Now in terms of producing hydrogen ions, one thing you'll notice whenever we look at the numerical value for these Ka's, as I go from Ka1 to Ka2 to Ka3 in this case, the numerical values get smaller and smaller and smaller. So for most polyprotic acids, this first step, the Ka1, just the first ionization, is all you need to take into account if you are calculating the pH. Really all you need to do is consider this first ionization to determine how much H plus is produced in order to calculate the pH. There is a small amount of H plus produced in the second and the third steps but these are so small compared to the amount produced in the first step that they are negligible. This is in general, this is most of the polyprotic acids. You do want to do a quick check to make sure that you can use that assumption, that approximation. That is the case most of the time.